Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Ankit Padak and I work as a consultant in pediatric pulmonology, allergy and sleep medicine at Children's Chest Clinic, New Delhi. In this video, we will be talking about adenoid facies. So, what are adenoids? Adenoids are like lymph nodes or tonsils which are at the back of our nose. We cannot see them through our throat because that area cannot be seen. Now usually they are small in size and they protect us and they make certain cells which are part of our immunity and hence they are important. But occasionally, especially in children, they can enlarge in size and that is called as an adenoid hypertrophy. Now because adenoids are at the back of the nose and if they become large in size, they are going to block our nasal passages. Now if our nasal passages get blocked, then what happens? Now that leads to mouth breathing because of the blockage of the nose, the child cannot breathe through the nose and the child is going to constantly breathe through the mouth. Now if the adenoids are enlarged significantly, they are not treated for, for, a, for a few years, then children develop certain facial changes which are known as adenoid facies. Now in adenoid facies, the child will have a large mouth, a small nose because they are actually breathing through the mouth. They have a hitched up upper lip, they have dental malocclusion, they have a small maxilla and remember these changes are permanent. Now this happens because the mouth constantly is open and the tongue cannot oppose the palate and for proper growth of the face the apposition of the tongue with the palate is something which is extremely important. What can be the other problems which can be seen if the child has enlarged adenoids? Now, if adenoids are enlarged, they usually would block the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube connects our ears with the nose. Now, when adenoids are enlarged, they would block the opening of the eustachian tube in the nose. And that would reduce the flow of fluid from the middle ear into the nose. And hence, fluid accumulates in the ear. And that leads to a condition which is known as serious otitis media. This can lead to hearing loss. The other problem which is seen with adenoids are sleep apnea. Now when we lie down, the muscle tone of our body reduces. Our airway is already blocked because of adenoids. And in addition, during sleep, the muscles also relax. And that leads to significant obstruction in breathing, which is called as sleep apnea. In this situation, you will find the child is constantly snoring. Occasionally, in addition to the snoring, there is gust. So the child might snore like this. Sometimes can gasp like this. Occasionally, the parents would say that the child stops breathe for a few seconds and then starts again breathing. The child can be, you know, sleeping in abnormal postures like hyperextended postures. The child can be sleeping always in a prone position to improve the airway. The child can be very sweaty in the night. The child might be passing urine in the bed. And there can be daytime symptoms like overactivity excessive sleepiness and a reduction in school performance.
So if a child actually starts to develop adenoid phases, what needs to be done? Now it is important for everyone to understand that if the, if the child is starting to develop adenoid phases, then, the, then we need to treat the adenoids. And in this situation, the treatment of choice is surgical, which is an adenotonsillectomy. Now, if done early, then the changes would not progress further. But if a child develops adenoid facies for a few years, then sometimes the adenoids will actually regress in size and, and, and at that point of time, surgery will not be helpful. So if your child is having a regular mouth breathing, if your child is having a persistent nasal block, if your child is having ear problems, if your child has a persistent snore and any other nighttime symptoms like gasping, sleeping in abnormal postures, your child might be having a problem of an enlarged adenoids. You need to get in touch with your child pulmonologist to evaluate your child further and take proper advice. For more information, you can log on to our website, ankitparak.com. Thank you.